Hi there, this is Gabe from Dice3D at Brandeis University, and today I'm going to show you a little bit about how to add and remove presets from your profiles and how to edit them in depth. So if you've been using Simplify 3.0, which came out over the summer, you know that um, there's a bunch of presets now, both for materials, for print quality, and if you've got a multi-extrusion printer, one that has more than one nozzle, which nozzle you're using, little drop-downs at the top of your settings bar. Uh, I'm afraid I can't show you Simplify because this computer won't capture Simplify 3D very well, but you know what they look like if you've been using Simplify. And if you've ever seen those and realized that they don't change the settings you want them to, um, and so when you load one up you've got to adjust the settings a little bit every time you do it, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm going to show you how to go about changing that real quick. What you gotta do is under the file tab, you click file and then export FFF, which will take one of the f profiles that you have loaded into Simplify and export it as a text file. Um, you select it from the drop down list, you select the one you want, you press OK, you pick where you're gonna save it on your computer, and then you open it. So you can either open it, I'm using Notepad because it's great and I'm using a PC. Uh, otherwise, you can right click on it and say open with uh, or open on a PC, on a Mac open with a text editor, or if that doesn't work, you can rename it, change the .fff ending to .txt for text file, and just, if you do that, make sure that you change it back when you're done. So that will let, give you something like this. Uh, depending on which profile you have, you'll notice it'll say the name up here, where mine says Maker Gear M2 Dual, it's just the one that I decided to open. It'll show you what version uh, it is of the profile, so if Simplify has pushed out updates to your profile, it might be a different date that it came out on, and which software it was created with, so 3.0.2 is my current, most recent version of Simplify is the one I'm using. And the rest of this is gobbledygook if you don't know what you're doing. This is all XML code, um, which is a programming language, and if you don't know what it is, don't worry, I'll show you a little bit about how it works. Basically, all information inside of XML is composed of this identifier section right here, these bits in uh, purple, the information inside of it, and then ending with another piece of this purple text that ends the, the identifier, that ends this section. So this section describes the default print material, the one that shows up in the little drop downs at the top. Um, instead of saying ABS or whatever, this one will start with PLA. So you can see it defines it here in this little ankle bracket section, it'll tell you it, uh, the default value is PLA, and then it says I'm done with that definition, excuse me, with that definition and adds a little uh, slash sign to say I'm done. And you see that throughout this text document, uh, you've got the start, the information, and the end. And that goes through, and you see this is a very long text document, there's every single setting that has to do with your profile, so all of the speeds, all of the temperatures, all the everything else is all saved in here. Now I wouldn't recommend changing most of those settings in here because they're much easier to do with inside Simplify itself. You don't really need to do it here. You just do that and you press update profile which is probably what you've been doing up till now. But what I want to show you is how to adjust those preset uh, drop down bars that you've seen at the top. And to do that I've also got to show you something to do with XML is in between those purple headers or what my computer makes purple is more code on some sections. You see these bits are indented with two spaces and those are subsections for longer pieces of information. So some are on the same line, so, uh, so some pieces of information stay on the same line, so you see the print quality here stays on the same line like I was showing you before, but some are larger. So the explanations of what constitutes an extruder, so the right extruder and the left extruder, get their whole own section. And all the information that has to do with that extruder is indented inside of this bit, and then once it hits the slash extruder, means that extruder definition is over. So within the right extruder, um, if you know the, the tab layout in the advanced tab, there's the extruder tab, and then there's extruder 1 and extruder 2 if you have more than one extruder. And they each have their own settings, so which tool head number it is, the diameter, the width, the, um, whether or not you have auto width on the width, extrusion multiplier, yada, yada, yada. All of this is stored underneath the header of which extruder it belongs to. And so um, you've got two extruders for this printer. Uh, 
but if you have more extruders for some reason, you will see more of these defined here. And all this information, it, it, these aren't the only pieces that are subsection. There's some other bits. If I scroll down, you can see temperatures are also like this, where they'll define a temperature controller, the information that has to do with the temperature controller, and then end that section. So if you see something that's indented, it means it has to do with a, a greater, uh, it has a greater piece to it, a, an outer enclosing bracket, and everything else is inside of that. So, like I said, all this information is nice, but you really don't need to touch it from in here. Um, all these settings are available for you to get at otherwise, uh, just through the basic information in Simplify 3D. And when you press Update Profile, it'll save all those settings. Uh, if you are editing this stuff, I will mention one other thing. You'll see the starting and ending G codes are really, really long. Um, they don't have enters. They don't have new lines. They're just all on one line. This should be on one line. This uh, My computer is currently wrapping this text um, because it's too long for one line. But you'll see instead of new lines, new enter characters, you'll see commas. So if you are writing G code and put it into this document, you need to, instead of having new lines, you put commas. Um, which is just a simple find and replace, but it's important to know because otherwise it won't work quite right. Uh, again, you'll see all the settings you're used to from your Simplify. Until down you get to down to here, you get the auto configure material. So this is what I really want here to talk about. It has to do with those presets at the top. So if you remember, there's the leftmost drop-down bar is the PLA section or is the material section, and you've usually got a couple. There's PLA. If I scroll down some more. You see, this is all to do with the PLA section. It ends at this other purple marker down here. Then there's ABS definitions all down here. PVA for my printer. Um, my printer also has nylon. It has all these things. So you can see there's a lot of settings stored in here. So whenever you click on that button that says PLA or ABS, let me get back to where I was. Here's PLA. When you get to that section and you click on that, it'll set all these settings so that um, they set out the right way you you need to be most noticeably is the extrusion multiplier so when you select PLA the right extruder will have 1.0 extrusion multiplier the left extruder will have 1.0 extrusion multiplier but if you select ABS the right extruder will have 1.1 and the left extruder will have 1.1 um, these are just my settings yours might say something different so keep that in mind and if you have a printer that has a forward or uh, say forwards and backwards extruder, it might say forwards and backwards here. So front extruder, back extruder, something like that. So whenever you select the PLA thing from the drop down menu, you'll do all these changes. So if there's something you don't like in here, you can just easily change it. And if there's something that you want it to do that it currently doesn't, you can just add it in. So say I want it to change the z-axis speed, so let me just do a quick speed for uh, uh, search rapid rapid x y speed so that's uh, okay so here's the travel speed for the x and y axis so I'm gonna copy that and you'll notice that it's really 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 big and that's because this is in millimeters per minute not millimeters per second so do the math multiply by 60 um, to get what you're used to but say when I scroll back down it's easy to get lost here Oop. there there's PLA again so say I wanted it whenever I change the PLA to also change the um, speed, I'll just put some indentation there and type in that line. And I want the new travel speed whenever I select PLA to be 3,000. That's probably really little, but there you go. It's just to show you how that works. Now, something you should know is that when I put this in here and I select PLA, yes, it will change the travel speed regardless of if I've said it before. but if I switch back to ABS, down here, in ABS there's no section here that says change the travel speed. So it won't change it back. So just be aware if you change the speed in one of the sections and you don't change it back in the others, you might get confused and accidentally have a speed that you don't want. So just to make sure that I don't have that happen, in the ABS section, I'm going to add the default speed back. Oops. There we go, indented properly. And also make sure that if you add things in, make sure they're outside of the extruder definitions here or the temperature definitions. Uh, temperatures here, fans here, things like that. They should be just um, two indents in from 
the uh, material definition here. So now when I select PLA, it'll slow down the travel speed for whatever reason. And when I select it back to ABS, it'll speed up the travel speed back to my old default, which is nice because that means, for example, if you're printing with some kind of flexible material, you can slow down the temperature, you can slow down the speeds. Um, and then when you select the defaults for other materials, have it go back to what you want it to be. So that's pretty nice and useful. I know I made a NinjaFlex one. And speaking of which, if there's a setting here that you don't like, so in my Maker Lab, we never print in ABS. You can just delete it. You gotta find the end of the ABS list though. So if I go from here down to here and delete that, and there's an extra thing here, now ABS will no longer show up on that list. But say, oops, I actually wanted to add a new one in, so maybe I print with a flexible material. Let me copy this. Copy. New line, paste. And I forgot to add this little character. So now I have a duplicate section that says PLA here and PLA up there. Again, as I said, it's easy to get lost. But I can remove this and say NinjaFlex. Oops, JaFlex, NinjaFlex, because that's what we use in my lab. They sponsored us last semester, which was really nice of them. And now I can change the, so maybe on NinjaFlex I would want to change the speed down. And in PLA, I would want to change the speed back up to, what was it, 18,000 or something like that. So that makes more sense. So if you've got more materials you print with and they're not shown on the list, that's a great way to add them in so you don't have to constantly be manually adjusting settings, especially if people don't know what they're doing. Um, you, have, you don't have to leave them a nice long checklist. You can just say click the button and it'll all work great. So that's pretty helpful. Um, and this works for the materials as I just showed you. And if you keep scrolling down below that, you'll see there's also... Keep going, keep going, keep going. Here, the print quality. So again, the second drop-down list is the speeds. Um, so fast, medium quality, high quality. And again, these have very few settings that are adjusted in them. But you can, oh, this shouldn't be here. This was from previous take of me making this video. Ha ha ha, I'm totally perfect and don't need multiple takes. Um, so the, right here, you can see all the settings that go into the drop-down list. Uh, so when you select medium, it'll change the layer height, it'll change the top solid layers, the bottom solid layers, it'll add a skirt, skirt one means on, infill percentage, yada, yada, yada. So you're probably used to these from clicking them, but if you ever want to change it and say medium quality should really be, uh, oops, should be 50% infill because I'm crazy, and high quality should really be 99% infill because I'm really crazy, um, then you could do that. And also, again, if you want here to change the speeds, I could say add the rapid speeds in. They, uh, the identifiers might not be exactly what you expect them to be, but as long as you find them in the list up there, um, you'll get it right. No worries. And so if I wanted to change the speeds and high to slow it down to make it higher quality, I could do that. Now just make sure you might conflict with the NinjaFlex speeds I made from up there. Um, so just double check always that you did everything quite right. And for the third drop-down list, if you've got a printer with more than one extruder, you'll see the same thing here. Auto-configure extruders, write extruder only, allowed tool heads one, because only one tool head's being used. There's one for left, there's one for both extruders. Now, if you've got, say, a printer that, as I said before, that has a front extruder and a back extruder, and these say left and right, it can be really annoying, because you have to remember front means right and left means back or whatever. So you could change this. You could say, actually, I want this to be rear oops, oops, rear, I can spell, rear extruder only, and left, whatever. You get the idea. You can adjust the names of these, and it'll be great. Again, this is where this G-code bit comes into play. You'll see, because, say, if you're printing with the left extruder, you purge the left extruder. If you're printing with the right extruder, you purge the right extruder. Um, there'll be different G-code in these sections. And so make sure you remember, new lines are denoted with this comma instead of things like that. The last thing I'll show you, so you've basically figured out how to learn how to adjust the quality settings in the middle, the uh, material settings on the left, and the 
multiple extrusion settings on the right, the three drop down menus. And the last thing that bothers me and you can fix in here is if you've made your own custom profile um, and you have multiple printers. If you have multiple printers and you load up, say, the MakerBot Replicator 2 profile, which I do all the time because we have a bunch in the club, you'll notice that there is a build plate model that shows up that goes underneath the little grid that you're used to. And it's kind of nice. It shows you what the build plate looks like and you're like, yay, it's there. But if you switch from that to a profile that you've made yourself, that, that model will stay, uh, but it'll kind of get offset and it'll look ugly and there's no reason for that to be there. So what you can actually do is I'm going to do a quick search which you can't see and find model. And right here in the text, this is uh, above the presets, right? Above the presets, above the starting G code is this bit. I'll find it again, model, right there. That says override printer models, and that has to do with that bed model. So if you set this to zero, it means it won't override the models, and if you set it to one, it means it will override the models. So default uh, the models that you create yourself when you say add new uh, profile or add new profile, the profiles that you make yourself. When you say add new profile, these will be zero by default. So when you change from a a profile that has a model to one that doesn't, it won't get rid of the old one. And so to make sure it does, just set that to one so that you won't have any leftover ghost of a platform of a printer you're not using because that's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, there is a way to put your own custom profiles in here, uh, custom models for your custom profiles. I don't know how to do it, but I'm sure you can figure it out. Um, but that's more than I know how to do. So once you're done, you've made all the changes you want and you're ready to test this. You just save it. So Control S, Command S if you're on a Mac. And then if you've changed it to a .txt file, a text file, rename it back to a .fff. And then go to InSimplify, go to File, Import FFF, find it on your computer, select it, and it'll get added to your list. If there's an error, you might have forgotten to close a bracket with this end modifier right here. Um, or something like that. So just double check what you've done. And worst comes the worst, re-export the one that works and make the changes again, make sure everything goes all right. But by and large, you should get it to work. The problem I mostly had was things wouldn't change what, excuse me, when I told them to. Um, and so just make sure everything is set up all right. It will work, I trust, trust me on that. And then once you've imported it, you'll have a new one with the same name. You delete the old one or store it for safekeeping is what I would do and you're all set to good to go. So I hope this has been helpful. If you need any help, just say something in the comments. I'm usually pretty good about doing that. If you have any ideas for another video you want, uh, again, say something in the comments. I hopefully can actually do something that'd be helpful. And I hope this has been nice and handy. And so thanks very much for watching. So good luck with all of your printing and have a nice time. See ya.